Microsoft drops a dozen security updates. The OPM wastes taxpayer money. Oh my goodness. Hack advice, satellite, dangerous TLDs, and more. It's Monday. I am wired for sound, and we got a lot coming up now on ThreatWire. Hey! Happy Wednesday, people. Thank you, Darren. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for 9-9-2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. And my thanks to everybody that supports the show via patreon.com slash threatwire. If you're running Windows, run Windows Update, like I did this morning, and it'll update for a while, because there are 12 patches being dropped right now, 17 Internet Explorer flaws are corrected. One patch for Microsoft Edge, a graphics patch for a hack that's already in the wild, and, well, just run Windows Update because Krebs says, quote, five of the patches fix flaws that could get PCs compromised with little to no help from users, and five of the bulletins have vulnerabilities that were publicly disclosed before today, including one that reportedly has been detected in exploits in the wild. Also, dump Adobe Shockwave Player if you haven't already. Okay. While we're floating around Krebs on security.com, he also reports that, quote, the Office of Personnel Management, the OPM, has awarded a $133 million contract to a private firm in an effort to provide credit monitoring services for three years to the nearly 22 million people who had their social security numbers and other sensitive data stolen by cyber criminals. Krebs then adds that perhaps the agency should be offering the option to pay for the cost that victims may incur in freezing their credit files, a much more effective way of preventing identity theft. Seriously, if you're worried about identity theft, and you should be, put a freeze on your credit files. It makes it much harder for thieves to do anything gnarly with them, and they'll go bother somebody else whose credit files aren't frozen. Great quote from Krebs, quote, no matter how you slice it, $133 million is a staggering figure for a service that in all likelihood will do little to prevent identity thieves from hijacking the name's good credit and good faith of breach victims. Seriously. Meanwhile, the cleverly titled Ars Technica article, Many New Top Level Domains Have Become Internet's Bad Neighborhoods, <laughs> reports that, surprise, new TLDs are being exploited to impersonate legit.com.org.net.whatever TLDs, i.e. top-level domains, and uh, covers a really interesting set of studies by packet inspection tool vendor and NetSec firm Bluecoat, the list of the worst 10 TLDs for malicious domains, .zip, .review, .country, .kim, .cricket, .science, .work, .party, .gq, that's uh, Equatorial Guyana, and .link. Go read the article if you want to find out how .zip made number one, despite the fact that it's never actually been publicly released for sale. In other cheerful news, the IBT reports that WhatsApp Web, the desktop version of the hugely popular messaging app owned by Facebook Incorporated, has a major security flaw that could allow hackers to infect user systems by simply knowing their phone number, potentially putting 200 million people at risk, end quote. The register says, quote, Fishers have been targeting security researchers with fake LinkedIn profiles built on repurposed photos of models and company logos, according to F-Secure hacker Sean Sullivan. Why? Quote, connecting with researcher profiles would help attackers map relationships between targets, view otherwise hidden personal information, and potentially open lines of communication through which valuable data may be disclosed. End quote. What do we call that? Social engineering. Several sources report that Bugzilla Mozilla's bug database was hacked. Richard Barnes, Firefox security chief, said, quote, we believe they used that information to attack Firefox users. Mozilla has conducted an investigation of this unauthorized access, and we have taken several actions to address the immediate threat. We are also making improvements to Bugzilla to ensure the security of our products, our developer community, and our users, end quote. We're talking about something like 185 major flaws being examined think if I have that information correct. And in perhaps the most awesome story of the day, and certainly the densest infographic, Kapersky's Threat Post blog has the story on how the Turla APT group, that's the Russian cyber espionage crew, used, quote, poorly secured satellite-based internet links to hide command and control operations. Exciting stuff, that, because especially when you think, quote, satellite-based internet receivers can be located anywhere within the area covered by a satellite, and this is generally quite large. So. Satellites, huge area, easy to hide. Hmm. Before I head out, I want to give everyone who has supported the show on Patreon a big thanks. We're currently shooting one episode of ThreatWire a week, rotating between Darren Kitchen, Shannon Morris, and myself. If we can hit our next milestone goal on Patreon.com slash ThreatWire, we'll bring it up to two, two episodes a week. 
Seriously, if you find value from this and can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire, and we may even feature your adorable critters like these ones in our next episode. So much fun, people. Hey, you can also find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internet.